Greetings, fellow movie lovers all over the world. It's your boy, Mikey Savage 21 or MS21, whatever the heck you want to call me, bringing you the first installment of MS21 Reviews, the series where I review, break down, and discuss the various forms of movies and films I see throughout the week. Now, obviously, I had kind of hyped this up on social media. Originally, this was supposed to be an on-camera one, but as I am recording now, I unfortunately forgot to charge my camera, and even when I remembered to charge the camera, I forgot to take the lens cap off. So, yeah, we'll just have to do it with audio today, but hey, sometimes people make mistakes. It is what it is. But today, I will be focusing on the two movies, as you saw in the thumbnail, Men in Black International and Dark Phoenix. All right, so just giving you guys a brief rundown of how everything is going to go. First, I'm going to give a brief synopsis of each film. Then I'm going to give a non-spoiler breakdown of the film, talk about some of the positives, some of the negatives, the, the plot breakdown and the character performances. And then I'm going to give my overall score. Then I'll move into the next movie and then I'll go to my final thoughts and the closing from there. All right. So the first movie up, let's talk about Men in Black International. So the synopsis reads, The Men in Black have expanded to cover the entire globe, but so have the villains of the universe. To keep everyone safe, decorated Agent H, played by Chris Hemsworth, and determined rookie Agent M, played by Tessa Thompson, must join forces when aliens that can take the form of any human arrive on Earth. Both agents embark on a globe-trotting adventure to save the agency and ultimately the world from their mischievous plans while also investigating a potential mole hidden within the MIB agency. Alright, so when I went in to see this movie, I didn't have the highest of expectations. One, the Rotten Tomato score at the time, it was pretty low, so I went in with low expectations and I walked out, eh, you're not not disappointed but not necessarily overjoyed either it's kind of one of those films where it's like i can understand why they made this film but they just didn't really add anything to it and so when you hear the basis of the plot you know that sounds kind of interesting but if you think about it it's basically just the same thing that happened in the first movie the only difference is this time is you have a female as opposed to a male like you did in the first film and that's really it that was one of the things that i was hoping with this new plot you know that they would expound it a little bit more and as of this recording we had all that information come out from the hollywood reporter about the onset drama and everything that's going on so now we can kind of see why the story and the plot fell kind of flat and why it just seemed like a simple rehashing of what was already done in the original men in black film but just to highlight a couple of character performances first of all i want to talk about chris hemsworth now a lot of people know chris hemsworth from mostly his store movies which he is most famous for and rightly so he is great at store but Let's talk about him in the Ghostbusters movie. Let's talk about him in a couple of other films he's appearing in. Let's talk about him in this movie. One of the things that I have noticed over the years is that Crim Sensworth is really funny. When you pair him up with the right co-host and you pair him up with the right director, the dude can let his comedic chops flow. Now, one of the things that I did appreciate about the Ghostbusters remix from 2016 was his performance because I thought he did a pretty good job. Now, I will admit that sometimes his dumb nature did get on my nerves a little bit, but for the most part, it didn't get too zany and too crazy. What I liked is you had director Paul Fee kind of attribute and, and show a spotlight onto Thor and that's why we ultimately got the more comedic Thor in Thor Ragnarok, which everyone praises him for. And of course, when talking to Chris Hemsworth, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that he was also in The Cabin in the Woods, one of the most underrated comedies of all time. I mean, a lot of people poo-poo it on it as a bad horror movie, but I think it's a great horror comedy movie, though. And of course, this film is no different. Again, you know, he's sitting here playing his suave, cool self, but cranked up to a notch. So not only is he suave and handsome and debonair, but he also get the chance to see a little bit more of his comedic shots and what he brings to the table. And then you compare that to his co-host of Tessa Thompson, who we all know as Valkyrie from Thor Ragnarok and from the other Avengers films. She's also been in some other noteworthy films, you know, being the love interest to Creed and all of the Creed films. They have great chemistry together. And one thing I can say is that Tessa Thompson why she was supposed to be playing the, the straight person in this film kind of like somewhat of a role reversal for how you know will smith and tommy lee jones you had will smith obviously was the more goofy of the personality and tommy lee jones was a straight man this time they flipped it to where you have agent h who's more of the laid back go with the flow type of person as opposed to agent m who really wants to prove herself in this movie and wants to earn a spot inside of mib so when you pair them up together you're gonna get great chemistry like you did with thor ragnarok that's one of the best parts of thor 
Thor Ragnarok and their jokes were able to play it back and forth off of each other now again some of the jokes didn't land but that's okay I think their overall chemistry is what helped me enjoy this film just a little bit more one more character performance that I want to get to Liam Neeson is Liam Neeson but whenever he pops up in the movie it always has me a little bit curious because you never know what sort of Liam Neeson you're gonna get are you gonna get the taken Liam Neeson are you gonna get the run all night Liam Neeson are you gonna get the walk among the tombstones Liam Neeson are you gonna get this kind of Liam Neeson where he plays a straight man but also has a little bit of a mystery and a little bit more of a comedic side to him as well and sometimes the way he interacts with Chris Hemworth is also funny last character I want to talk about is Kumal Nanjani's character Pawnee now when I first saw him in the trailers I was like who is this person I was like oh it's probably gonna be some no-name actor that they get to play this character but apparently it turned out to be Kumal Nanjani and just like in the big set I think he crushed it I think his role was kind of pointless in this movie he seemed like he just didn't fit kind of with what the movie was going with and the overall style and tone of it maybe if we would have seen you know a couple of more scenes with him by himself maybe it wouldn't have felt as jarring but regardless I loved his performance now I know I've been poo-pooing so far a lot about this movie but there are some positives to this movie one at least this movie while it did not necessarily build or add anything to the franchise it was great to see this franchise back and at least trying something different originally when we thought of the men in black we just thought of just a new york location but the fact that there's a mib located all around the globe makes a lot more sense because not all aliens are going to flock to just new york city and now we see that they flock to paris some of them flock to canada having an mib international makes a lot of sense so the premise is something that i'm looking forward to kind of similar with charlie's angels movie that's coming up where you have something similar to that where it's kind of more of a global thing as opposed to just one closed location i would also say one other positive to this film would be the fact that it is within the same world as men in black men in black 2 and mib 3 this isn't a reboot if anything it's more of a requel which is like a reboot slash sequel so it still takes place in the universe that we already know and again the only other positive i can think of is the on-screen chemistry between our two leads other than that there really wasn't many redeeming qualities to this movie like i've said a million times now it really didn't add anything to the mythos or anything that we didn't already know about the men in black so to me it fell short in that but in terms of a score i had to think long and hard about this one because again it's not a total train wreck of a movie it's not the worst movie i've ever seen but at the same time it was still kind of a lackluster movie so i'm gonna settle upon the score of a five out of a ten moving on to our next film which is the reason most of you are probably here because you want to hear me rag and talk crap about dark phoenix so again getting into the brief synopsis of dark phoenix during a life-threatening rescue mission in space jean gray played by sophie turner is hit by a cosmic force that transforms her into one of the most powerful mutants of all wrestling with this increasingly unstable power as well as her own personal past demons jean spirals out of control tearing the x-men family apart and threatening to destroy the very fabric of our planet so initially going to this had very 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 low expectations even lower expectations for in men in black because i saw this the week after it came out and with it barely you know bringing in 30 million and with it subsequently falling on the second weekend it fell 76 percent i can see why because this movie is not that great there was some interesting things that they set up in the movie in terms of the overall plot it's something we've seen before we saw this with x-men the last stand but at least they took out that whole subplot that became the bigger uh story with the taking of the mutant powers away at least this time you, you have simon kenberg trying his best to honor the comic of dark phoenix but again certain things in here just don't work but before i get to the negatives of what didn't work let's talk about some of the character performances okay so to me the person that i always look to see in these movies is the actor who plays quicksilver i love seeing him i love how they always give him his couple of moments to shine in the movie and so he has a couple of interesting moments in this movie which one i'm very cool and I, I was was like yeah yeah we're getting quicksilver action one of them was started off to be something good but ultimately just ended up being a waste again how can i not brag on james mcavoy and michael fassbender of professor x and magneto respectively these guys are just class acts and I am really going to miss seeing them on screen as these two characters because the chemistry that these two have together, you can't lie, it's been one of the best things about this rebooted X-Men franchise. X-Men Apocalypse withstanding, I love how they play back and forth off each other and that, that philosophical difference of mutants are good and humans are bad 
And then again, you juxtapose that with James McAvoy's Professor X way of thinking of mutants are good and we need to prove that to humans so that we can coincide and live together. Uh, I love how, you know, you have Magneto has taken, you know, refuge and just kind of secluded himself away from the world on this little island. But then you have Professor X, who is the opposite of that, who's putting the X-Men in people's faces. They're going out and doing more missions and showing the world that they're not to be feared, that they are just regular humans, just like everybody else. They've just been gifted with extraordinary gifts that can be very useful to humanity like we saw in the trailer with them going to go rescue those astronauts that got stuck in space one other performance that i kind of feel like i have to talk about is sophie turner you know what i while the dialogue that she was given was not the best i did enjoy her portrayal of Jean gray and i could kind of feel in moments sophie turner's pain and anguish coming out as Jean Grey as she's trying to struggle and cope with learning about her past and trying to learn and understand how to use this new power it was interesting and I liked her relationship with Ty Sheridan I like what they were trying to do with his character and with her character but I felt like we just didn't get enough of that because they really barely used them in X-Men Apocalypse you know we only got to see them in a couple of fights and everything but really that's about it I mean <sighs> I like Storm. Um, I like seeing Storm in this movie. Again, Nightcrawler is always a blast. Uh, that's pretty much it. In terms of positives, well, what I'll say is all the action moments in this movie were pretty dang cool. Like every single action beat and moment in this movie felt really cool and felt really awesome. And those are really the standout parts of the movie. That's about it. Other than like certain character performances I just talked about. But in terms of the negative, once again, we have a misfiring on all cylinders. We have a first time guy who has never directed anything before trying to direct a big budget film like this. And it shows you start off with an OK first act. You have a horrible second act and then you have a salvageable ending and that's not gonna give you a great storytelling movie that that's what hurt this film ultimately you could tell that this was done by a first-time director but even if you didn't know that simon kimber was a first-time director the overall story implied itself once again felt rushed and mishandled there was a lot of things they could have done to salvage the story and make it a little bit more notable because again this is the last movie that we're going to be getting from fox new mutants withstanding and this isn't the way you want to end a franchise or way you want to go out you want to end it with something as high caliber of a x-men days of future past or a logan so before all the controversy came out about the reshoots and how it was too similar to another marvel movie that was coming out around the same time of it before any of that came out i was kind of excited because i was like okay maybe they can tell this dark phoenix story right but certain characters i felt were useless and pointless in this movie certain plot points and certain actions that characters make don't make any sense again i won't get into any of that because this is a non-spoiler breakdown but again you had jennifer lawrence you know phoning it in i throughout the movie i kept saying somebody go get her a telephone or a phone book because she's phoning it in you can clearly tell she doesn't want to be a part of this franchise anymore and hey look they should have respected her wishes and just not had her be in this movie but i guess at this point it, she's been set up as such a key figure in these movies that you have no choice but to put her in here other than those really cool action moments and a couple of standout character performance that's about it this film is as weak as we can get and it saddens me because again i wanted this film to be great so ultimately for my score i'm gonna give this film a three out of a ten overall i think if you had to choose between which of these movies to go see i would actually recommend going and seeing men in black international in this case like i said I loved Dark Phoenix for what it was trying to do. Again, I love the comic story of the Dark Phoenix, but trying to compress it down to a two hour film is very hard to do, especially once you get into the whole cosmic aspect of it. Overall, like I said, I think MIB is a better film. It's not a great film either, but there was a lot more there than in terms of X-Men Dark Phoenix, other than again, like I said, a couple of cool action pieces. But what do you guys think? Are you excited to see Men in Black International or Dark Phoenix? Have you seen both movies and what did you think of them did you agree with the likes and dislikes let me know down in the comment section below and once again i would like to thank you all so much for watching this first episode of ms21 reviews my goal is to have an installment uploaded every monday around 6 p.m provided my schedule doesn't change and each video will be anywhere from about seven to ten minutes long i decided to do this instead of doing the individual reviews for 
each movie. With this format, it gives me a chance to review more than one movie at a time and it limits the numbers of videos that I have to edit and upload so I can focus on other content that I'm passionate about besides films. So let me know what you think of this video by liking it or disliking it, subscribing if you enjoy the video, and of course, don't forget to share it with a friend. Also, please make sure you go and follow me on all the social media platforms at OfficialMS21. Thank you, and I hope you all have a blessed day.